Uh, hi everybody, um, going to be doing the 16 shelf now, the bottom of this unit, um, all O's and P's on this one. Um, yeah, let's go and check out what we've got anyway. Uh, hi there, uh, 16 shelf coming up now. Um, start with the O's again on here again. Um, one Miss Call 2. Uh, this is like the Asian one, but it's uh, not directed by Takashi Mika this time. Uh, it does show, it's not you know, like a great version. It, you know, it was okay, but it wasn't as good as the first. Um, open Water. Which is Builders Air does Blair, which meets Jaws. Um, yeah, I suppose it is a little bit. It was okay. It had uh, quite a lot of bit of suspense and that in it. Um, whether you'd call it an out and out horror, I don't know. But um, you know, see, it wasn't bad. It was watchable. Uh, all off against the Invisible Man. Uh, yeah, this was this was pretty good. So I can add our old films release this one. Uh, very very cheesy. So I think it was an early seventies film. Um, I'm not sure if uh, who directed this one. It doesn't say anywhere. Nope. Oh, yeah. Uh, Pierre Ch Chevalier or something. I always used to think this was a Jess Franco film, but it wasn't. But, um, yeah, yeah, it was okay. It was okay for what it was. It wasn't, um, wasn't much like gore or violence in it. And uh, the creature looked a bit ridiculous. But, um, you know, there was loads of nudity in it, which is probably why you got the 18. But, yeah, it, it, you know, it was passable. It was watchable. Um, Orphan. Uh, heard a lot about this. I've not watched this yet. Um, had heard good things, though. It was supposed to be really, really good. So um, I'll watch that soon. Uh, the Orphanage, the uh, Grilled uh, Grill del Toro produced one. Um, really, really good atmospheric sort of ghost story. That uh, this is the two discs at that one. Uh, the others, uh, that's a Nicole Kidman one, not the ghost story one. Um, good little twist in that. Uh, I did guess the twist like about halfway through the film now, but uh, you know it was a good little twist on it. Um, this is the two disc edition as well. So it's, uh, you know, it's good, decent, not not a bad release that one. Uh, Outpost, uh, that that, you know, that was decent. I watched that before. It was a um, you know pretty gory in parts. Not a bad movie. Pan's Labyrinth, a really really brilliant film. That um, watched that a few times. Uh, Guillermo del Toro, well, I think that's probably his best film, really, isn't it? Everyone loves, everyone uh, thinks that's his best one. A really really good dark fantasy. Um, Oh, there's some good monsters and creature effects in it as well. Yeah, really, really good that. <coughs> uh, Paradise Lost. Uh, not watched this one yet either. Um, you know, it's supposed to be okay. It's like a, I think it's like a slasher film sort of thing. But I've never watched it, so I don't really know that much about it. Uh, there's Paranormal Activity. Um, yeah, the, the, the first one, you know, was, wasn't too bad with that. It was... Um, it was mega hyped up, and I think I expected a bit more from them. You know, I don't mind the Paranormal Activity films, but uh, I'm not a huge fan of them. Yeah. Uh, Paranormal Activity 2, which, um, you know, um, that, that one was passable. It was okay. It wasn't as good as the first one. It was probably one of the weaker of the, of the, uh, you know, the series. But. Um, Paranormal Activity 3, um, which I actually enjoyed probably the most out of all the ones I've watched. Um, I thought that was probably... It was one of the two sisters and that... Um, uh, you know, the sort of the ending was a bit strange on that as well. It was like um, something to do with the grandparents, wasn't it? On it, and it was part of a cult or something. And, uh, that was probably the best of the paranormals. Uh, Paranormal Activity Four. Yeah, I watched that one. I didn't really like that one very much. Um, it had that little, little weird little boy in it, a uh, little freaky little boy in it. But um, he, he, you know, he had to give you a few scares and that. But um, it was probably the weak. You know, that's probably another one of the weaker ones. Paranormal Ascendancy. Um, not watched that. I think it's going to be like a cheap rip off of that. So um, of the Paranormal Activity films, I've not watched it though. Uh, the Passing. Uh, that's another one I picked up really cheap. I haven't watched that. I think I picked it up from a charity shop or something. I'm um, not even sure if that is a proper horror or not. That one. It's um, something about like life after death or something. But uh, you know, I've not watched it yet. I'll see what it's like. Uh, Patrick. Is that the Australian one about the psychic, um, the psychic guy in the hospital? You know, so I've seen it a few times. It's okay. Uh, West Cravens of People Under the Stairs. I really, really like this one. Another one's been downgraded to a 15 certificate. This was an 18 when I first saw it on video, but uh, really, really good. Uh, great performances in that as well. Really, really good performances. You know, from everyone in that film. Um, good story as well. Really enjoyed it. Good film. Uh, Pet Cemetery, Stephen King's Pet Cemetery, another another great Stephen King adaptation. Um, really good, really brilliant film. Um, you know, it, I really enjoyed it a lot. I had um, the guy who played Herman Munster, really, Fred Gwynn, he was in it. Uh, really good movie. Uh, next one up, 
Um, Don Coscarelli's uh, Phantasm. Brilliant film. I love the Phantasm series. I love all of them. The great, great series that. I'm really looking forward to um, Phantasm 5 Ravager coming out. Supposedly, supposed to come out in um, October 2014. I don't know um, how accurate that is from reading about it, but really, really looking forward to Phantasm 5. Um, this one, really, really good. Great movie. The one I think is probably the best, Phantasm 2. That is a brilliant one. That um, This is a digital entertainment one, so I think it's got a little... Like a few scenes cut out of this one. But, uh, you know, it doesn't detract from the movie. It's a great, great movie. Phantasm 3. Uh, the only one I haven't watched yet, funnily enough. Um, I will get around to watching that one, though. I just sort of um, bought Oblivion and jumped straight into the Oblivion one. So I have not got a chance to watch this one, but I will watch that one. And uh, there's Phantasm 4 Oblivion. Um, I really enjoyed that one as well. That was like just 15 rated, that one. But, um... Yeah, it's had a lot of story about um, the tall man and that, like the tall man's backstory and how he become the tall man and that. Oh, really, really interesting movie, that one. Uh, we've got The Phantom of the Opera. Uh, another silent one there. Um, not sure when this one was out. I think it was 1927 or something like that. But yeah, The Long Chani Phantom. Uh, another really, really good silent movie. Um, really, you know my two favourites. That's, that's probably the third or fourth favourite one. But um, yeah, still a really, really good classic silent movie, that Dario Argento's Phantom of the Opera, uh, the one with Julian Sands in it. Uh, it's decent, that film. I mean, it's not bad. Um, the only thing was, is, um, the Phantom, I thought it was a bit disappointed with the Phantom in that he wasn't really um, disfigured or anything like that in it. And uh, he, was like a, he was more or less like a regular guy, you know, really, but obviously with murderous instincts. But yeah, it, you know, it wasn't bad. It was, it was okay, but uh, I really, you know, for, in terms of new Phantom of the Operas, uh, I really like the Robert England one, the, uh, the fairly recent ones. The Robert England one's good. A uh, bit better than that one, and uh, I haven't got that Robert England one yet, though. Uh, Phantoms, which is the one also called Meridian, um, which is the Charles Band one with Sharon and Fenn. Um, sort of slightly erotic sort of horror film, this one. Um, sort of guy turns into like, sort of like a werewolf type creature, like, you know, when he makes love to someone and. Uh, but it was really good. It was a nice, like, really, really good atmosphere. It was um, sort of set in a castle, and that was really nice. Really good gothic atmosphere to it. Um, you know, it was like, um, you know, you know, decent, nice atmosphere. You watch that more for the atmosphere than anything. Uh, Daddy Argento's Phenomena. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Sometimes, um, you know, I've watched it. Sometimes I, I've, I've not liked it. Other times I've really liked it. It's one of them films that you sort of have to be in the mood to watch. Um, you know, it was a decent movie. It's like Donald Pleasance is in it and Jennifer Connelly. Uh, I did like, I do like the film, but it's, it does tend to drag on sometimes when watch it. On, it's on sort of repeat viewings, it does drag a bit. Uh, Faun, which is a really, really sort of good Korean, Korean, Korean film, that one. I think it was Korean. Yeah, it was Korean. Um, really, really good, scary one. Sort of, you know, done on sort of the uh, strength of sort of uh, Ringo and all that, but, you know, really, really decent film, that. Uh, this Pig Hunt, this surprise on this, this is actually pretty good as well. I expected it to be, um, you know, just you know, fairly average, but I really enjoyed it. There's these people going after hunting down this massive pig, like big killer boar. You know, it was a decent, decent film. I thought it was okay. Uh, Pin, like psychological horror. Um, that this sort of like um, this doctor who's got this like huge sort of uh, like anatomical dummy, and um, he sort of pretends to talk to the kids using it, and uh, when he passes away, the one lad sort of thinks Pin's alive, and he. Sort of like, you know, Pin tells him to, to keep saying this. I think it's like sort of a study on schizophrenia rather than a proper horror. Because I think the guy's like, you know, his, his personality is like controlling him and he's controlling the dummy. But it was not really good, really good creepy film, that so. Uh, Pinocchio's Revenge, another region 1 one. Um, not watched this yet, uh, it looks really daft. Um, do like them sort of films, I'll check it out. Uh, Joe Dante's Piranha. Yeah, this is another classic one from like the 70s, um, 78, 79, something like that. Decent film, you know, not bad. Not as good as Gremlins, you know, from its later film, but... There's Piranha, the remake of Piranha, um, Robbie Kelly Brook and that. And then, you know, this was okay. Um, you know, some decent gore in it as well. Um, you know, some of the acting was a bit iffy in it, but, uh, you know, decent gore in that. And, um, you know, I might try and pick the 3D version of that uh, Roger Corman's best film, I think, in my opinion here, The Pit and the Pendulum, uh, Vincent Price in it. 
Uh, probably my favourite of the Corbin films. Uh, certainly the, the, the of his Edgar Allan Power, you know, his Ed, Edgar Allan Power adaptions. That's probably you know, my favourite one of his. Uh, the Region One one as well. It's a really really good movie. That well worth watching. Stuart Gordon's remake, Pit in the Pendulum. Uh, Lance Henriksen's playing like um, this like sort of Inquisitor guy, and uh, you know that's really really good. I think Oliver Reed's got a cameo in it, and uh, you know, there's quite a few you know, famous faces in that as well. That was a decent film, that. Really enjoyable. Planet Terror, which was like um, that one that came the on the twin on the uh, the twin bill with um, Death Proof, yeah. Uh, not watched Death Proof yet, but I really, really like this one. This was a great movie. It's got elements of sci-fi to it, but there's like zombies and quite a lot of gore and stuff in it. So a decent film. Uh, Poltergeist, the Region 1 version. A uh, brilliant film, everyone's heard of that. Poltergeist 2, another great one. I really like that. And there's like, um, the thing that used to, I used to watch that a lot as a, when I was like, younger and... Um, that priest that used to really freak me out in there. He was like really, really eerie. It's, it's good to watch just for his performance, I thought. So, uh, Poltergeist 3, which is a bit of a step down, that one, you know. Not not a great one, that. Uh, Popcorn, a bit of a cool classic, that one. Um, these people doing like, um, like a movie marathon in the cinema. Um, yeah, decent. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the Possessed, uh, not watched that yet. Don't miss any good. Uh, finish off. Uh, the two dish, two disc special extra edition of Poltergeist. Um, I think probably one of Trauma's best films ever made. Brilliant, brilliant film. Uh, some really funny songs in it. Good comedy, loads of gore. Uh, well worth checking this one out. I recommend getting this one. Um, this is actually the film I think I've paid the most money for ever for a film. I think I paid about eighteen pound for that. I do tend to try to get my films, you know, sort of on the cheap bargains, but. Um, I didn't pay eighteen pounds for this one. I was after it for so long. You know, great movie as well. So anyway, there's um, shelf sixteen. Uh, just one more unit to go. Another four shelves should be finished then. Um, thanks so much for watching. Thank you.